Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So excited. Uh, to see you what sparked this conference? Uh, we had some questions from uh, Team Challenge and also from uh, from City of Lights. I mean, you literally had women walking around talking to demons. I mean, so they reached out to us and we started meeting with some of the ladies and, and taking them through deliverance. Uh, but you know, it, it really don't work that way. Um, it just, just, that's not how, how it goes. Yes, I can rally a demon up. Yes, I can cast a demon out. But my experience in the last year, this is a process that belongs to the responsibility of the pastor. Now, the issue is, is, you know, probably only 5% of the people out there um, uh, behind pulpits actually preach biblical deliverance. And if they would back up and understand that where all of that stuff come from, you know, number one, the cessation doctrine, which I don't really know how they apply that to deliverance, uh, but they say that. And then they say only the apostles, uh, we are a fivefold ministry church, so we still believe in the uh, apostle, we still believe in the uh, prophet, we believe in the prophetic, the difference in the two. Um, but, um, you know, so... As they reached out, I'm like, look, I can't go to Team Child. I can't have church here nine times a week, you know, nine times a week, uh, and uh, and handle this and meet with my members and pray for them, go pray over their homes and do everything a pastor's supposed to do and meet with individuals from rehabs to, 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 to pray demons out of them. So... I said, well, we need a conference. We need to start having regular conferences. So that's what we're doing um, to just uh, to share. We got uh, myself, Josh, uh, Dave Painter, and Emily Bush will be speaking today. Uh, we got five testimonies. Marilyn, uh, Paige, uh, Jackson, uh, Reese, uh, Malik, and uh, Madison Hand. They'll all be sharing their testimonies from different uh, areas. Number one, uh, I, I felt the Lord put these, none of these folks that I got testifying today would be really considered what we would call a uh, long-term addicts. Now, let me clear something up. Every one of you are born addicted to sin. It just manifests itself differently. Whether it's uh, uh, donuts, gossip, bitterness, jealousy, envy, you're addicted to sin. And every one of us need deliverance. Um, so um, that being said, uh, this conference is absolutely free, but donations are greatly, uh, are gladly accepted and appreciated. You can give online. Is that up? Yes, yeah. Okay. You can give online at shortcreekchurch.com. Uh, we got hard copies of the deliverance and inner healing manuals are available here. Uh, we're asking, you know, for a minimum donation of $15. Uh, if you want one, um, you know, we spent right at $10 getting <coughs> printed, and we got lunch down there. Uh, for us when we break and uh, and then also you'll be able to go get a digital copy of PDF off the Short Creek Church Facebook page. Now this is a uh, unedited, it's, it's complete, uh, it's not as in depth, uh, but I just wanted something to sort of just give you the highlights and it also has the oppression and inner healing form. Now this oppression and inner healing form is designed around the very root cause of all addiction, which is, uh, people call it the orphan's curse, people call it the, uh, the fatherless curse, the bastard curse. Uh, it, it is when your biological dad, number one, we're all born with it, we'll be talking about it because we're born estranged from our Abba Father, our Heavenly Father. But when you don't have a earthly father, step up and do what he's supposed to do, be the priest, the prophet, the provider, and the protector of the home, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, then you compound uh, that rejection, that neglect, and then the demonization really, really sets in. Um, and so I'm going to share to start with uh, a prophetic word that I got January the 8th uh, concerning what we were going to see happen this year. Now, I've been preaching on deliverance since 2017, but the first time I seen a demon manifest, I was like, in 2019, I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? 
I thought the young girl was high on meth, right? So she come up for prayer, and um, and the evangelist was leading her in the not so biblical sinner's prayer, which I do still believe in having them confess and stuff like that. But I, I think there's more to salvation. I believe in lordship salvation, where you surrender your entire life, every aspect of it, yeah. over to Him. But he was leading, I got a word from the Lord, and I don't even know why I said this. I never even thought about it, never heard of it, didn't really realize what had happened to Marilyn. And I said, you're going to feel something right here, and it's going to come up here. When I tell it to go, do not resist it, let it come out. Next thing I know, she and I both were in the floor. Now, she was scattered, like, you know, dark eyes, come up out of the floor completely clear face. Amen. And then, so we were doing that every three or four months. We'd have our unaddicted revival every month, and people would come in, to demons would manifest. But at the beginning of the year, I'm going to read the closing to my sermon from January the 8th of 2023. The enemy has invaded the church in America. Its careful and subtle tactic of compromise has stripped the power of the Holy Spirit in many of our congregations. Amen. Personal sin generational sin and societal sin, not just in the world, but in our churches, have opened up the masses in our nation to be both progressively and aggressively influenced by demons or demonized. The church has come to the place of separation. God is separating those who are willing to go against tradition. The remnant will be led by men and women like Gideon, unusual candidates, men and women who have had many, I mean many sins forgiven. Their redemption is more significant than most because their sins have destroyed them more than most. The spiritual famine brought about by the church's compromise is coming to an end. I want to tell you a highlight of 2023. I want uh, Malik and Reese to stand up. Just stand up. They attacked me. <laughs> Come across the altar. Now he, he's a football player for Birmingham. I'm sitting down now. He's a football player for Birmingham Southern. And I'm like, I got tired. And I come across the altar. I tackled him one time. I said, I'm getting some get back. So I come across the altar and threw him down to the line. I'm going to wrestle when you know more. Get out in Jesus' name. But we wrestled. I've seen uh, Reese coughed up blood and insects. He's going to share his testimony. Now, Reese, you know, if you know anything about school, I mean, Birmingham Southern's not, it, that ain't Bevel State, you know. <laughs> you don't go to Birmingham Southern unless you, you unless you what I, like what Jacob Lindley and I would call a citizen, right, Jacob? There, he's a citizen. So, Jacob and I aren't citizens. They're part of our uh, Dora Demon Slayers. We uh, disciple folks from other churches and teach them how to do it. If you've not watched Lauren's testimony, go back and watch it. It is amazing. God's done an amazing work in her life. Supernatural strength. Josh and I were praying for a guy. Now listen, we're both bodybuilders, ex-bodybuilders. We work out. The last time I hack squatted, I hack squatted 685 pounds three times. That's an abnormal amount of weight for an up 52-year-old man. But uh, here we are. We're, we're laying on him, praying for him. And the dude, he don't work out. There ain't nothing significant about him. And he stood straight up. I'm like, dude, you just, I'm pushing down on you. And, he, and the Lord told me, don't go. And I did anyway, and I got my ankle hurt. That's what happened. The Lord said, no, don't go. I seen, I, I was listening to a Bagani video, and it talked about demons entering through the nose. And then I got to thinking about it. How did, how did God's spirit enter the dust, right? right? The breath of life, right? So, Chip, <clears throat> long-term addiction, and uh, I get up here at the altar, and I just listen to that coming back from vacation. I look down there, and there's blood trickling from her nose, and the Lord said, cast it out. I said, oh, Lord, I said, this is going to sound weird. I said, any demon that entered through her nose, I command you to come out now in Jesus' name. She didn't sneeze up blood. She sneezed up stuff that looked like bloody liver. Right, look like meat yeah. right here in this altar. We've seen wild demonic trances. I mean, when, when, when Malik come up for prayer the first time, his eyes is black, he's growling. I got a Catholic sitting on the first row 
uh, and, and Malik's right here, and this Catholic's here to see his buddy get baptized. I mean, real Catholic. And I reach over, and I don't know why I laughed. I'm like, here we go. Come on, devil. Because I like casting out devils. It's fine, right? And the uh, devil got me for 39 years. I'm gonna get, I'm getting some get back in Jesus' name. So I reach over and lay hands on him, and I'm not, he didn't collapse. He went, bam. Here they come. You know, I got my guys, I got a whole bunch of people to pray for. So after he's out, they come around and begin to pray for him. He convulged off the floor in a witchcraft spirit that he got for messing around with the wrong girl. Somebody needs to understand uh, Taylor Swift's really a witch. And she's really teaching young girls how to do witchcraft and manipulate a little boy. So watch that stuff. I've uh, had demons talk to us. I've seen demonic tongues. Uh, I've had uh, people throw up as we lay hands on them. Instantly projectile vomit. No prayer. Just come up. And lay hands on them like, and they're looking like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's cool. Don't worry about it, man. Don't, don't worry about it. We, I love my stains, right? Every time I see a stain on these carpets, I know it means somebody's freedom. Amen. I've seen that happen. We've had people come in for deliverance and shaking and throwing up. And we've had seven times we've had obscure scratches appear on us people. One time I'm praying for a lady and the Lord tells me to stand up and look. I stand up and look and I see five scratches. I grab the oil and I begin to rebuke it and the one in the middle starts growing running down her back. I'm like, Ashley, look at this. And I said, do you have any witchcraft in your family? She said, no. She went and talked to her dad about it. The aunt she, that helped raise her. Yeah, she was a witch. Um, I've seen people throw up dark black bile for 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the healings that we've seen, because you can't have deliverance without healing. You can't have deliverance and healing without tongues. It just don't work because all three of those are Mark 16. You, you, they're going, Marilyn had a heart attack in 2019. They couldn't find the cause, so they called it stress. We got a new cardiologist a couple months ago, went to him and said, I see no sign of a heart attack. We were in intensive care. She had a heart attack. No sign. Uh, Maryland's January the uh, the first. We're praying for her. You can watch the video. Immediately, she could barely. She has rheumatoid arthritis. God's going to heal her from that too in Jesus' name. Amen. But she could barely walk, and then immediately gone. You can watch. You can see the face. You can see her face. She goes from limping to like high stepping, just <laughs> elated. Well, these are some of the healings that we say. I could go on and on. I'm just going to mention a few. And then, uh, my cat allergies. How stupid is that? See, I, I got this cat, and it liked me. And I'm like, ah. and my eyes would swell, and my nose would run, and I'm walking out. So we got invited to a, a, a H2 church, H2O, a Free Will Baptist church to do a revival. We got five different programs, 200 people there. And I was walking out, my friend Dave, wave your, raise your hand there today. He said, man, let me pray for your cat allergies. You know, because this cat just wanted to be on my lap and my eyes was running. And God healed my cat allergies. I had this spot on my forehead for, for seven years. And it started getting bigger. So I'm like, man, you know, skin cancer is a thing. I've been out in the sun a lot. And it was getting bigger. I mean, it was, it was a, it, you can notice it. I looked like a Hindu, but it was cancer. <laughs> But, so I get an appointment with the dermatologist and the Lord said, you didn't even pray about it. I said, cool. I got some more. I said, Lord, if you don't mind. Seven years within two days it was complete. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shelby done. Everybody turn to Shelby. Stand up, please. Okay, so this is Shelby. Uh, <clears throat> she had a, uh, you can sit down there. <laughs> she had a uh, breathing problems for months. They couldn't figure it out. Finally did an x-ray, found a spot on her arm. She come up for prayer. The first thing she did when she come in, she noticed it was hard to breathe. The more she tried to worship, the more the pain got, the more the oppression. One of the, that's the spirit of infirmity. We cast out the spirit of infirmity and she got healed immediately. She goes back the next week for the contrast scan to figure out what, well, guess what? The spot's not there. She goes back a couple of months, an autoimmune disease that she's had for years. The blurred work was optimal compared to what it was. So healing and deliverance works together. Multiple shoulders, back pain, stomach pain. Last night, we had a, a young couple come up uh, for prayer. 
and getting that sore throat. Everybody know that sore throat that's going around? So he's got that sore throat. It's really bothering him. She has a sinus infection. We pray for her on Wednesday. It's a little bit better. I rebuke the bacteria in her, and her sinuses started flowing. Blood. And then we pray, put my hand on his throat. I rebuked it, and his eyes lit up. You know, when you see people get instantly healed, like when they can't move and they've got pain right here or pain right here or something going on, and their eyes light up and they're like, whoa, what's that? And his eyes lit up and he's like, it's gone, man. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And then he got up and he said, man, I can't, I'm, I'm breathing different. I'm breathing different. So that just happened last night. So we see that constantly. I could go on and on. If healing in tongues aren't happening with your deliverance, you're probably uh, having demons manifest but not leave. Mm. And demons will manifest and they'll lay low. You got to dig. And sometimes yeah. digging, you got to understand this is work. Yeah. This is the most labor intensive ministry that you'll ever do. But let me tell you something, it's worth it. The reason our church is full, the reason we have a, a young lady from Prattville here today and uh, other places and, and, and Dothan and coming from uh, uh, Mississippi and, and all over, even from Vernon this morning, uh, is because the power of God is real. Uh, but I wanted to welcome you and uh, just talk quickly about intimacy with Jesus, intimacy with Jesus in our charismatic and Pentecostal circles. Some in the American church uh, have erred, seeking experiences, healing, prophetic words, deliverance, miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We get so caught up in what gift we have and what fivefold ministry position we're called to that we forget that it's only through intimacy with Jesus the Christ that these gifts flow. You got a lot of people out there flowing in false gifts. They tell you, 2024, they're going to be exposed. If ministry isn't flowing from a passion for serving our Lord and Savior, it's our ministry and not His. What does Ephesians 2 20 and 21 tell us? That Jesus Christ is the cornerstone for everything that we do. If you listen to a preacher consistently and he don't talk about repentance, if he don't talk about the cross, if he don't talk about the blood, if he don't talk about the remission of sins, if he don't talk about renouncing, if he don't talk about turning from your sins and renewing your mind, let me tell you something. He is not preaching the gospel. Stop listening to that guy now. Another thing you need to do, eat at your table. Snack at other tables. I'm not saying don't have a, 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 a your favorite YouTube preacher. I got him. Uh, Mike Cigarelli, Greg Locke, Isaiah Salvador, Vlad, they are some of my favorites. Uh, Miles Rutherford, man, y'all need to go back and listen to his word for 2024. He's got a word for 2024 that is something else. So Christ-centered ministry is a uh, passion for intimacy with Jesus Christ. Be broken, crushed, embrace the sufferings of Christ. Live a life of repentance. It's all about heart, heart posture. Am I, am I hiding my, the Lord? Give me a word. What we're passing down to our kids is their, their misunderstanding that they're hiding their sin. Because I hide my sin, I'm passing that on to my kids. Mm -hmm. we got to confess our sins. What happens when you hide your sin? Your bones rotten from the inside out. Somebody needs to read the 32, the 32nd chapter of Psalms. We need to come. Oh, if you're in a church where you cannot openly confess any sin, homosexuality, whatever the sin is, you need to find a new church in Jesus' name. Or, or change, pray to your church changes. Do that. Don't, don't be church all uh, Forgive others often and quickly. Listen, if you can't pray for that person every day, if you can't pray for God to bless them from a sincere heart, the person that hurts you the most needs to be at the top of your prayer list Amen. for the rest of your life. If you can't do that, you have to forgive them. Amen. Sir, we're, we're around here we don't have ushers. We have mules. Right? My dad, when he needed something done, he'd say, he either called me fat boy or mule. I used to be a, 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 a pretty plump fellow. But uh, uh, until I got to prison, I realized I was also addicted to honey buns. So. And them, them little chocolate waxy donuts, I could uh, put them down. Uh, Baiters, french fries, and all kinds of stuff. So. But uh, uh, when he called me mule, he needed me to do something. So we don't have ushers, we have mules. Why? Wow, mules keep their head down, their mouth shut, and they pull the load. Somebody say amen. 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 
have a personal devotional life. Be consistent in giving, prayer, and fasting. Crucify the flesh. Stay in the secret place. Integrity. Wow, that's not a word we hear in some churches today. You mean I gotta, I gotta, if I commit to it, I gotta do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Character is something that's important. Yeah. Uh, support your local church with your time and your resources. Listen. You gonna not pay tithes and try to cast out demons? You gonna catch something you don't like? Come on, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that out there. You gonna catch something you don't like? You gotta pay your tithes, man. I don't care. Oh, that's the Old Testament, man. Shut up in Jesus' name. Close your pie hole. Speak to you in that darkness. Uh, support your local church. Be intentional in connecting with people and have balance. And you gotta rest. You got to rest. Starting Sunday afternoons to Tuesday morning, Marilyn and I are almost unavailable. Almost. We're working on that. Josh is off work for a little while, so I'm cutting my phone off. I probably won't ever do that. Uh, Acts 2, uh, 20 and 24 says, But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for the finishing of the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news, the gospel about the wonderful grace of God. All right, so let's talk about uh, demonic influence. There's oppression, possession. They're both bad words. They're just both bad words. Number one, everything isn't a demon. We deal with the flesh, the world, strongholds, and unclean spirits. Some people can get addicted to the deliverance ministry. We call those phantom demons and psychosomatic manifestations. So in other words, they young in the Lord and the devil whispers in their ear and they think they got a demon and they start manifesting again. But, but listen, don't discourage anybody. Hear from the Holy Spirit then make the correction privately. You know, uh, uh, and we, we've seen that a lot um, because, I mean, they don't know, man. Uh, we have a lot of unchurched folks. We have a church full of Baptists, Catholics. We have a church all over. They don't know. They just, all of a sudden, they start sweating. They get a knot in their chest, and they get pressure on their back, and, 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 and all, they want to run. I can't tell you how many times we have paramedics here that, that go to church here. How many times have we had people hooked up to the EKG out front that was demons manifesting? They had no heart problem. They thought they were dying. Yeah. yeah. You know, they didn't get free. You know why? Because they didn't want to repent. They liked their sin. <laughs> um, <clears throat> why don't church, why are they so opposed? Why? Uh, they just reject the Holy Spirit. Religious traditions, even religious demons. Uh, misunderstanding of demonization. If we look at the word possessed in the King James Version, it actually means to be under the power or the influence of a demon. Listen, if you couldn't be under the influence of a demon, why would you need the shield of faith? Somebody please explain that. Why would you need, if a Christian could not be under the influence of a demon, why would you need the shield of faith? And then, hey, listen to me explain something to you. Peter, when, when he, his pride, Jesus wasn't calling him like Satan. When Jesus looked at him and said, Satan, get behind me, he was speaking to Satan who had come in and consumed and controlled Peter. And then we look at the Apostle Paul, you know, two-thirds of the New Testament. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a, a messenger, what? An angelos of Satan? So let me tell you something. You don't think you can have a demon? Hey, yes, you can. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't, And you can catch one, too. You can back up. You can revert. Deliverance is something that sometimes has to happen. Uh, you know, I went up to last March. I went up to uh, uh, Global Vision. Maryland full on manifested for a witchcraft spirit, just over believing superstitions, you know, and uh, our, had a Masonic book in her old house that her, her grandfather had given her. Full, had, just had the book. Just had it. Here she is. She's coughing, going crazy in mass deliverance. And, I'm struggling. I mean, my mind is out of control with lustful thoughts. You know, I lived a, a depraved, sexually depraved life. And and, uh, and I'm like, Lord, if this is a demon, I repent. I renounce it. Please get rid of it. I coughed a little bit. Five days later, I come to Mary and I said, listen, I, God set me free up there. Okay, now, here I am. I'm casting out demons every week. Seeing people healed. But something had come in and attached itself to my mind 
that I had come into agreement with. You know what I said? Well, this is just, you're just messed up. This is all the sin. You're going to be like, you're going to have to fight this the rest of your life. Because the sun sets free. It's free indeed. So, uh, when you look at that word possessed with devils, it just means under the influence. You can be under the influence. The word possession we see in the Bible and some Bible translations doesn't rightfully describe how the realm of darkness gains influence over us. The Greek word translated means to gain influence. When we believe the lies of the enemy, those lies become deceptions. As we grow in those lies, as we walk out this life, believing the deception is real, the enemy progressively gains more influence on how we think and eventually deliverance is needed. Eventually, we have a serious stronghold, a deep-rooted seat pattern in our thinking that controls our behavior based on the deception of darkness. After the stronghold of deception grows in strength, demons move in. At this point, it's almost impossible to determine your thoughts from those of the demons. And action must be taken if that person is going to find freedom in Christ. Amen. Uh, so just briefly... Uh, any questions about just understanding that, hey, listen, uh, Christians can be demonized. Is it different, uh, the level of demonization? You know, I had a young man that, that, that come not too long ago. He thought he was saved. He wasn't saved. His, his, it took about seven of us to hold him down as, as the demon was trying to get him to run out the back door here. He, 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 he thought he was, you know. Um, you know, he's saved now. Um, Amen. Yeah. And I said, we, we prayed for her and uh, the controlling spirit come up there and said, you pray for Quan? I reached over there and laid my hands on him. He had the baby and all of a sudden, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right about where he is. Stood straight up, fell flat on his face. Coughing, growing up. And downstairs, he's sitting there and he's just crying. And I didn't know. I had no idea. The sweetest, most humble, most genuine and, and showed out at Soul Food Night last night, too. Okay. Yeah, chicken mm -hmm. and Anybody got any questions before we uh, go to the next speaker? So when somebody asks, somebody who's not familiar with deliverance, like, are the demons inside of them? Because, you know, demonic oppression versus inside of their house. Like, well, some Christians don't believe you can be oppressed by a demon from the outside, but they can't really want inside because the Holy Spirit is in there. Well, um, so like you have to view yourself as a house, like like this building right here. Okay? Yeah. The devil can be outside saying, "Hey, open the door! Hey, open the door! Hey, open the door!" Banging, looking for every window, door, and everything he can. That's the temptation and suggestions of the devil. Right. And then when he comes in, you let him in. He's oppressing you because now he's kicking over the drum set and he's. Un untuning the piano and he's breaking the TV and all that, but you're still in control of the house. Yeah, he's just in it. And then possession is when he gets you out of the house and you're banging to get back in. Wow. Okay, so that's the mode. That's the three different levels that you can be, have interaction with the kingdom of darkness or the devil. Okay. It's those three things. First Thessalonians five twenty three says, "I pray that your entire." Body, soul, and spirit be sanctified. What is soul? It's our mind, will, and our emotion. That, that's what we battle with. We battle with this. That's the reason it says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Part of that renewing is getting rid of the critters. Uh, you can have a rat in your house, but does the rat own the house? The rat doesn't own the house. So yes, you can have spirits of infirmity that cause sickness, and then you can also have uh, spirits that are affecting your mind. Now, as a Christian... They cannot possess or control your spirit because you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the other two parts you can have. Yeah. I was going to say, I think it's Ephesians 4.27. It says, give no place for the devil. So what happens is it starts as an outward attack for you to partake in willingful sin. And once you partake in that willingful sin, you are then susceptible to being inhabited by that spirit. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, I just had... Uh, I grew up, I think I was baptized when I was 11, and I grew up through a Baptist church, and I mean, all my life I've said the sinner's prayer at the end because I didn't know. 
And but I've also been told. You sure you weren't Pentecostal? Because that's what we do. We get saved nineteen times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was also told the whole time I'm once saved, always saved. So I've got that digging in my back of my mind. And I've got why am I continuously saying the sinner's prayer? And then you know, when I'm forty eight years old and I finally get delivered, I'm like, there ain't no doubt in my mind I'm going to Hallelujah. And connection is pretty cool because he's a, a friend of Robert Sharp, who's part of the Ambassador Network. Then he bumps into the uh, the incredibly prophetic, my prayer warrior over here uh, at the Domino Revival. So, any other questions before we move to the next speaker? All right, praise the Lord, John. You're next, John. Yes. Sir.